MegCram.com. Welcome to another MegCram video. Today we're going to talk about fentanyl overdoses. And this has been much more common. I am noticing it in our facility, in the emergency room, and also upstairs. In fact, recently we had a patient that came in, someone that doesn't take illicit drugs, but does take pain medications. And after his family was not able to get a hold of him for three days, they finally went over and found him, fortunately still alive, but on the ground, completely unconscious. And when he was brought in to the emergency room, he was found to be extremely hypernatremic up into the 160s. His thyroid hormone was through the roof. It was very high T3, a very low free T4, and a suppressed completely TSH. He was in kidney failure and had a significant metabolic acidosis. And as a result of that, he was breathing quite fast and really not responsive. After we began to resuscitate him and talk to him more, turned out that he started taking medications from a friend at the gym that would help him lose weight. And the urine drug stream was positive for methamphetamines. There was fentanyl in his urine. I suspect that there was also likely thyroid hormone in there to try to help him lose weight. And this leads to a bigger issue, which is that you just don't know what's in medications that you're taking unless some third party has done rigorous testing. And that's where we lead up to today. As many of you know, there is an epidemic of fatal overdoses, particularly with fentanyl. Fentanyl is a narcotic that's 200 times more potent than morphine. In other words, a very small dose of fentanyl can actually have profound effects on the ventilation, the respiration, and the consciousness of a patient. It's very easy to overdose, and if it's not witnessed and no one's there, the patient can die. And we can see here that there's been a dramatic increase just in the last five to eight years of the number of fentanyl overdose deaths, not only in LA County, but also in the United States. And it turns out that part of the reason, obviously, there are people who are intentionally overdosing on these things, but a significant amount, and we don't know exactly how long this has been going on for, there's been a significant issue with counterfeit pharmaceutical medications, particularly in Mexico. This was a U.S. Embassy consulate in Mexico press release, and I have a link to the description below, and it says here, quote, exercise caution when purchasing medication in Mexico. Pharmaceuticals, both over-the-counter and requiring prescription in the United States, are often readily available for purchase with little regulation. Counterfeit medication is common and may prove to be ineffective, the wrong strength, or contain dangerous ingredients. Medications should be purchased in consultation with a medical professional and from reputable establishments. The bottom line is they believe that there are organized efforts to provide counterfeit medications which are much cheaper to make and can be sold for a lot higher price. And the two general types that they're counterfeiting is Adderall and pain medication. Let's talk about pain medication briefly. Pain medication like Percocet, Norco, these sorts of controlled substances can be synthesized for much cheaper and little regulation with fentanyl because fentanyl is a similar medication and it would feel the same. However, fentanyl is extremely potent and any kind of calculation that goes off can actually be fatal in these situations. If there's too much, it will suppress your respirations and you will not ventilate. That'll cause a significant acidosis. You'll be unable to arouse and you will go into cardiopulmonary arrest. Adderall, which is a stimulant and has many different purposes, people use this for issues with sleep, for instance, this can be counterfeited with methamphetamines pretty cheaply, has a very similar surface effect, but they are very different. And these medications can be counterfeited. In some cases, they look almost identical to the original medications. So there was an article that was published in the Los Angeles Times back on June 14 by Connor Sheets and Carrie Blankinger, and I've put a link to it in the description below. Now, this was a separate investigation that they did. They took five separate trips where they purchased 55 different pills in 29 different pharmacies in eight different cities, and you can see them listed there. The 55 pills were broken up into 40 opioid medications. Okay, so we're seeing whether or not these medications actually had the opioid that was listed on the label. And what they found was that 15 of them were counterfeit. So that's 37%, full third of the opioid medications that were purchased here at these places were counterfeit. And the majority of those had fentanyl in them. And they used mass spectroscopy to confirm the presence of fentanyl in these medications. And one of the pills actually had no medication in it at all. 
The other pills that they looked at were Adderall samples. So they looked at those Adderall medications and 12 of them were not even Adderall. They were methamphetamines. They also had ecstasy. And I'll just stop here at this point because there have been, I have noticed, a number of patients that have come into the hospital that we do urine drug screens on, and they will pop up all sorts of things. And we'll ask them and they'll deny. And of course, we think in our head, well, maybe they're just denying it because they just won't admit it. But now I'm starting to understand perhaps that they may be taking medications that they think have Norco and hydrocodone or even Adderall in some of these samples, but they're actually getting something completely different. And you'd be surprised that these are not medications just from independent pharmacies. These are actually coming from, in some cases, regional pharmacy chains. And a quote from the article, they say, both there and in Huevo Progreso, pills purchased in sealed bottles tested positive for more powerful drugs, a possible sign of the sophistication of fakes made by cartels, which experts say are likely the source. And this is from this Los Angeles Times article. Makes me wonder how many of these drug overdose deaths are actually intentional or not, because you can never ask them to find out. Here is the 12-month ending provisional counts of drug overdose deaths in the United States. This is from the CDC website, and you can see it detailing the number of deaths. And notice here that the lowest number here is zero. So this is an actual proportion. You can see here just basically a doubling in eight years of the amount of people dying from drug overdoses. And where is this going up? You can see here that the states that are in blue, there is a reduction in percent change in drug overdose, and those are in orange, and the darker orange actually are increasing. Overall, it is increasing. Continuing on to what the United States Embassy and Consulate in Mexico is saying, the Drug Enforcement Administration reports counterfeit prescription pills are sold by criminals on both sides of the border. These pills are sometimes represented as OxyContin, Percocet, Xanax, and others, and may contain deadly doses of fentanyl. Counterfeit pills are readily advertised on social media and can be purchased at small, non-chain pharmacies in Mexico, along the border, and in tourist areas. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and hopefully it will save someone's life. If you want to learn more about how fentanyl can affect your respiratory system and specifically respiratory acidosis, come to medcram.com where we have continuing medical education units available in our course on medical acid base explained clearly. We have just recently hit over 200,000 people who have signed up for courses at medcram.com. A few of the benefits include no commercials, access to PDF files in the review section, and access to our full courses with quiz and continuing medical education units. If you found this YouTube video helpful, don't forget to subscribe, turn on notifications, and again, join us at medcram.com.